Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is um, Elia Kuznetsov. Uh, I work at uh, Yadron. Uh, and uh, today I'm uh, pleased to be here to share with you some uh, concepts and uh, problems we faced uh, when uh, we were building uh, a storage um, system with uh, some uh, uh, called um, features. Um, um, Yadro is a uh, not uh, well-known uh, technology company. We develop uh, hardware with a focus to uh, um, scale out uh, systems uh, which, from which, uh, from where we can bring some uh, features uh, to enterprise that we think um, all of us uh, from past and uh, from current experience are enterprise guys. Um, so. It's um, because of that. Um, today I will tell you uh, about um, a way we have uh, passed from uh, fulfilling, um, uh, fulfilling a custom, uh, request for a quite huge uh, storage system uh, to um, recent days when we uh, thought that, um, that when we found that we can uh, bring uh, some uh, features for that uh, huge uh, system uh, to enterprise, to enterprise customers, and enterprise infrastructure. infrastructure. Uh, this is the agenda. So, um, go next. Uh, initial requirements uh, from customer were um, extremely large uh, storage, hundreds of uh, petabytes with the possibility to grow and um, to scale large. Um, mostly these uh, requirements were similar to data archive, which is uh, common for now. Um, most uh, producing this uh, using uh, tape or optical media. Uh, but um, we have some uh, features that uh, not, not lead to use uh, this data. For example, uh, the data will be right once and read unpredictably rare. It's okay for traditional archive. Uh, but uh, we have a requirement for uh, uh, low latency, uh, which is uh, not uh, possible with uh, tape. Um, low latency because of uh, this uh, rare request uh, um, Mm. This request should be fulfilled uh, in a timely manner, and uh, they are uh, should have uh, low latency because uh, some part of request will uh, follow a uh, um, program uh, to use another date, which is placed on the another space. It uh, is. Um, uh, Mm, okay, I'll tell you about this a little. Uh, Sequential high bandwidth for data writing uh, used. Um, and uh, also requirement was uh, guaranteed data integrity uh, because of uh, the laws and um, other things that uh, incorrect data will. Um, for example, um, when we have losing, uh, have lost uh, one frame in the video. It's not a problem because um, man will not um, uh, see the difference. But uh, when you have changed one uh, bit uh, in the IP address, uh, for someone it uh, will uh, break the life. Um, another requirement was the TCO because of the uh, size of the storage. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, it was uh, quite um, no extra requirements for software part of the storage, no extra features, and it was quite uh, simple from this point of view. Um, from uh, that main requirements uh, derived um, requirements which we found. First of that is in density. Of course, uh, huge uh, storage uh, should be not uh, consume a lot of uh, footprint, a uh, lot of space. Uh, also, it uh, must not uh, get a lot of uh, 
power. Because um, you know, the customer um, is not able to build new data centers and power plants uh, near to it. Um, uh, the next thing is uh, scalability. Uh, customer required scalability at the site, but um, we think that uh, scalability, this uh, capacity, uh, anyway, will uh, bring uh, scalability at performance and requirements for scalability at performance. Uh, because of the latency which required uh, for that uh, software which use this, um, we thought that uh, moving parts like uh, used robotic uh, parts in libraries is uh, not allowed here. Um, later I will tell about why. And uh, data integrity, um, the first requ requirement from the first slide, uh, previous slide, it is a uh, uh, verification offline for so huge uh, amount uh, is not possible. You, you have no possibility to reread the data you wrote uh, again for, for, for checking. So uh, it must be uh, checked in line. When well, in time you are writing. Uh, uh, to uh, choose the right way for this huge storage, um, you need to. Most parts for any type of storage will be the same servers, uh, network infrastructure, uh, anything else, uh, it will be the same. Nevertheless, media type. Uh, uh, media type you are using. Um, so, um, uh, the main thing you have to choose is the media. Uh, you probably know about, uh, you know everything about this, but um, shortly. SSDs, um, it's a good choice, it is a, a very dense. Um, we can put uh, one petabyte in three units, standard uh, 19 inch rack, uh, but, uh, it, it also have very huge um, TBF and uh, outstanding reliability, mm, but um, there are some problems. And first of them is the price. Second is uh, uh, wearing issues. Not not an issue here, but uh, will be an issue in the future. Um, Ethernet uh, hard drives is a good. Uh, Technology, it will um, no need for low level coding and firmware. And probably every DevOps can use just drive uh, cool and use it uh, how it wants. But uh, there are no, it's not mature, mature technology, no um, mass product uh, employers for that um, itself. Tape. Um, tape uh, is. Uh, the thing that uh, if you think about cold storage of huge size, uh, the first, uh, first thing you think about is they, um, it doesn't consume any energy, it's major tens of years using um, high throughput, uh, but uh, in our case the problem in the time, seed time, um, to rewind uh, the cartridge you need the, two minutes and uh, you need a lot of time to bring robot from one place to another and even if you want to remove time in robot you have to put every cartridge in own drive it will be uh, it will be a problem uh, optical media is also very good but um, there are some problems uh, the same problem as with the tape, it is a library mechanism which will um, lead to uh, some uh, latency, more latency. Uh, because of uh, density of media, it will, the problem is a bigger footprint. Uh, and uh, another issue is um, low MTBF for drives because of um, uh, wearing of uh, laser which are uh, used in the drives. Uh, uh, and so, um, keeping that uh, all that in mind, we came to some design principles. Um, 
the slides are quite uh, chaotic, so uh, um, I didn't tell that we have come to hard drives, but we are. We have. Um, and uh, we decided to um, keep the drives part off. Um, later I will tell uh, about, uh, about it. Uh, um, we need to, to bring uh, and spin up uh, hard drives only for read-write purposes keep um, all of our consumption. Um, in our shelf, which we like to present later, uh, we will use only 24 drives um, powered on maximum, but uh, usually use uh, less. Um, no parity is about uh, range recording. Um, to maintain uh, density, um, we need uh, to um, I leave some things. For example, uh, because of a uh, low number of um, powered off, um, powered on drives, we need uh, less uh, cooling. Uh, we need uh, less cooling, uh, smaller fans, and so on. Uh, we don't need uh, power supplies for rich enclosure because uh, in enclosure consumption is quite low, less than. 300 watts. Um, because of lower TCO, which includes TCA, we have um, to maintain as simple as possible our enclosures, so we decided not to use redundant HVAs and expanders in the enclosures. Um, about that I said. Uh, because of uh, software um, not uh, very simple software requirements, we simplified the software and uh, we didn't use uh, um, the duplication, uh, tearing, uh, compression and so on of that uh, case. Um, how I was uh, choosing um, about the drives? Um, um, 10 years ago, uh, on the laptop hard drives, we uh, were able to spin off in time of working, and they were adapted for that. Uh, traditional SATA or enterprise hard drives um, were not designed for that. Uh, currently, and modern hard drives are able to do that, uh, and uh, um, they have a uh, few and or several um, things to save uh, consumption. Um, first, is a complete power off. We uh, power off hard drive, electronic uh, does not consume, nothing consumes, it's um, zero watt uh, consumption. Spindle uh, full stop. Uh, we stop uh, the spindle, we park uh, the head, and uh, on the electronics uh, consumes energy about Le less than one watt, about, consumes about half of watt energy. Uh, but it requires uh, some time to spin up uh, drive and uh, unpark uh, the head. Uh, another feature uh, which we can use on modern drives is the idle, uh, which uh, when uh, we can uh, spin a little slow down, uh, um, in less than two thousands of RPMs and um, park uh, the head. Uh, much faster activation, but uh, still requires about 20 seconds to, to start for, for, for the drives which we used. Um, but consumes about, uh, about two watts, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, another thing about um, data protection. There are several ways, for example, for rate or use traditional rate or range coding or um, two-dimensional rates, uh, um, data mirroring. It, it's a good choice to keep uh, higher availability, but uh, in a huge uh, capacity, in huge storage, it's not uh, the case because of uh, because of size and you consume for parity and mirroring too much uh, disks. I think that's here. Um, the prototype of uh, our 
our system which we built uh, for that design. Uh, it consists of um, four main parts, is, um, two servers uh, which are uh, open power processor based, um, it is, um, this, um, these parts we do not uh, design and build specifically for the storage, it was um, our main proposed um, product. Um, a server, it is a two unit uh, in height, um, up to four sockets and uh, 48 uh, cores, uh, eight terabytes of uh, traditional RDMs uh, in it. Um, each of that uh, server can, uh, each pair of this, uh, can support up to four uh, PCIe fabric controllers. Um, it is a <coughs> Uh, three unit box uh, which uh, contain uh, two PCIe switches in redundant topology with online topology reconstruction and so on. It also can contain up to 128 uh, VME SSD drives. So uh, with modern Toshpa 8 terabyte drives, it can be up to one petabyte, but we will not use it here because of the price. Uh, so on. Um, the things which uh, we designed uh, specifically for this purpose is a uh, coaster shelf. Um, it uh, has up to 128 uh, hard drives. Uh, it uh, contains one uh, SAS expander and uh, connects uh, by PCI Express um, HBA expander and connects by PCI Express to PCI fabric controller. Um, it doesn't contain any power supply, uh, and uh, power supplies and management are um, placed on a special power supply shelf. Um, minimal uh, redundant configuration um, is about uh, for petabytes of row space and um, uh, with, of course, with cache, which placed on uh, PCA fabric controller and server itself and consumes um, up to 3 kilowatts of uh, energy for, for that. Um, um, the thing uh, about uh, how we were choosing um, the storage media. Um, um, the things we need is uh, price because of uh, TCO. We were calculating this uh, using uh, TCO plus uh, TCA for media and the closure used for that, uh, energy consumption and cooling uh, with uh, five years in mind. Um, the most cheapest one for the cold storage of our type is um, LTO tapes. We choose for comparing Although because of its open nature and uh, normal and uh, um, roadmap, um, but it uh, has uh, quite huge uh, seek uh, latency for our purpose. Um, we also can, just for fun comparing SSDs, uh, but it has a quite large price, which is eight uh, times <coughs> higher than others. Um, optical archive uh, have an issue because of uh, density. For the same uh, capacity of 500 petabytes, which are uh, in mind in this uh, comparing <coughs> comparison, uh, we need uh, too much enclosures. Uh, enclosures have uh, too much drives, and um, all this leads to a higher price. Uh, but uh, the robot uh, technology um, still um, gives um, higher latency. Uh, and uh, for comparing traditional hard drives and the cold storage, um, the, cold, the cold storage we designed is about um, twice uh, cheaper than, uh, than traditional hard drives. And the price and others for that uh, were um, taken from internet open source like Amazon and others. Um, keeping in mind all uh, that we designed and choose for 
that particular project, uh, we um, thought and found out that we can uh, take um, all good things from here and add some enterprise pitch which require for most uh, customer and uh, combine them all to get um, some kind of uh, last year of uh, traditional normal good enterprise uh, storage. Uh, there are many workloads which require this one like uh, on demand, uh, it's a good um, choice for that. Um, using caching you can do this for huge uh, internet of things or other scattered projects when you uh, just need to put a huge <coughs> amount of data from millions of sensors and um, probably you will never read them but if you need to read them for example you on your power plant you get data from multiple sensors your power plant broken and you need to, on the next day to know why you you broke uh, your power plant you can get your data uh, your data very fast um, challenges we faced uh, is first of them is a uh, latency uh, which uh, should be minimized um, much more than we have now um, first of all you can um, use um, patterns for application behavior and uh, place uh, uh, serialize your ser serialize request for the data you need to spin up only those drives which you need um, uh, of course uh, here uh, we need to put uh, metadata into the flare because for example um, uh, metadata for 10 shells for 10 petabytes is about uh, 1 and 1.2 terabytes. Uh, so uh, keeping it on disk, um, you will not be able to find the data shortly. You need to put it on uh, RAM. Um, second thing is about this startup cycle limitations. It, um, five, seven years ago it was about uh, but now is about uh, 300 uh, key start stop uh, cycles uh, is about 165 times per day it's um, more than enough for that uh, now uh, because of for example uh, uh, HBAs and expanders on the shelves we have a single point of fail which uh, is a um, be because of uh, lowering TCO, but uh, for enterprise it's not um, allowed and we have to solve this problem maintaining uh, density and uh, keeping uh, bringing uh, you eliminating a single point of failure. Um, uh, rebuild time is also um, a huge problem for so um, here is a problem for huge uh, storage because of uh, 8 terabyte disk uh, to rebuild need to, to write all the data and all 8 terabytes will be writing about 15 hours it's uh, not allowable so uh, we need to maintain uh, the date um, in um, our data what we have written to rebuild only that parts which are broken and uh, not to recover all the drive, whole drive. <coughs> uh, extra requirements which we're learning from that is um, uh, placement policy for data and serializ serialization uh, to not to start extra disk and not to change quickly between the disk groups. Uh, we need to cache and tiering. Uh, it's uh, normal for any modern, even not modern, for, for storage of uh, any size. Mm. Uh, rebuild time already said about that. Uh, complex management, um, currently we have only a few 
few protocols uh, supporting on our system uh, because of no requirements uh, from uh, customer. But uh, for enterprise, you have to support all the uh, management and monitoring system which most customers use in their enterprise environments infrastructure. Um, to get uh, this storage more uh, better than now, there are several um, directions which have to be, for, for example, for the drives. Uh, currently, um, a startup time is about um, 25 seconds. It's too much, and um, probably it um, could be, be could be better. Uh, for saving energy in idle mode, we can uh, use lower RPM for um, spindle itself, and even for data normal read and write operations, uh, lower RPM is also allowed because of uh, density of data placed on, on plates. Um, to summarize, uh, enterprise feature which uh, have to be added um, to the current storage uh, object interface, which is uh, very interesting for modern customers. Uh, thing provisioning is also required for everyone, cache and carrying or ASF, snapshots, and, and um, uh, we want to add the support for other type of media like uh, Blu-ray discs and tape uh, to maintain even lower uh, uh, TCO in that. Uh, all the things are already done. And I guess I have nothing else to add. Any questions? If you have? So your product is for cold storage, right? So for capacity optimization, would you be interested in data reduction? You had a, a point that you chose not to implement any compression, dedo. Uh, not uh, for current implementation. We are not uh, able to do that because of the law. Um, a customer uh, required to keep the data without any uh, modification. In compression duplication, you have modification, <coughs> you even can correct it. Uh, because of that, we are not able to give you that. We are not allowed. Data should be the row as it uh, came from the system to storage without any modification. So you believe data integrity is compromised if you use that? Yes, for example, when you use uh, hashing uh, for the duplication, um, because of the hash collision, you can. Um, put uh, not uh, through data block uh, to another site. And, uh, with the compression, uh, you can uh, use um, loss, loss, uh, loss, less, less, less compression. Loss, less compression, but still it is a modification. Um, so, so customers said no to even that? Even that. Raw data as it has, as it is. What type of customers? Mm. Uh, here, I guess I'm not able to <laughs> tell, but um, you can think. Can you just, just mm. describe the industry without names? Mm, without names, it is public. It's, it is public. So what industry segment? Is it? Is it media entertainment? Is no, it no, no, no. It, it is that people it's whom I can tell you about. It's a homeland security. <laughs> Sorry? Homeland security. Homeland security. Oh, it's <laughs> Yes. So based on uh, your observation, cold storage, what's the throughput and time to data requirement normally customers have? Uh, throughput, um, fortunately, we um, need a um, geographically distributed system. Because of that, we can uh, distribute um, um, the data. And uh, throughput for each group of disk is uh, not a huge. Uh, so uh, 150 megabytes from each disk, and uh, in each group we have uh, the number of them equal to number of enclosures to keep uh, our um, um, non-redundant uh, shelf uh, 
um, and keep uh, the data correct on how to say we cannot uh, have more than one disk in each group uh, of each group in each enclosure because of um, uh, two portions of data can be put into one enclosure and when we remove uh, HB we load the data if we still uh, it is not online operation so we have uh, multiple uh, parts of uh, independent uh, group of uh, disk which works not as a single uh, rate not as a single uh, group of disk So it is um, up to, can I tell you exactly, but uh, as far as I remember, it is about uh, 40 um, threads uh, with one gig uh, each. Not one gig, not one gig, 150 gigs uh, because of uh, processing. It's not very huge in throughput uh, for each uh, group of to servers uh, plus uh, shells plus uh, PCIe fabric, but uh, there are more than one uh, group of that uh, storage uh, blocks. But what's the front-end interface to this? What's the interface to the outside world? Uh, currently, we have a block uh, storage, but uh, for enterprise, we think that we need uh, to move to object storage for uh, network storage search for file interface like NFS. So, so is it iSCSI or something as the front-end? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, front end is uh, Ethernet, uh, back end is the PCI Express, which expands to SAS HBAs and which expands to um, SATA. So you mentioned your current time to date is like 20 seconds, 25 seconds. That's about what you yes. It's uh, time you have uh, placed uh, request for data <coughs> on the controller and uh, you spin up the disks group. Yeah, but in your summary slides you said you know you'd like to have it faster. So what would be? Yes. What's the customer expectation? Uh, a future customer expectation. I think uh, all of them is going to zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we need um, <coughs> advice which can start. Twenty seconds. Um, yes. Um, yes. Each enclosure is a four unit uh, okay. and um, eighty centimeters in depth, uh, uh, and one hundred twenty eight discs. And the question is: Is that your own design enclosure? Yes. Yes. Of course. All the things here is our own design. And there is no power supplies in it and uh, smaller fans. Yeah. 
your, my, your question and my question are coming at the same thing, and that's where I was going is, well, if their expectation is to move to zero, you have to spin those up. I think that we can use um, another uh, approaches to do that caching and prediction. Uh, I guess software is much easier than uh, get uh, zero spin up time hard drive. So this four petabyte configuration that we have. Yes, but it scales up to. Is that the ten U? Hmm? Is that ten U mechanical form factor? No, it is a traditional 42 unit rack. It's a full rack. Yes, full rack. It, it is a minimal uh, to keep to maintain the data integrity and the rate of rates uh, of that. Uh, but it scales up to 20 uh, storage modules, so up to 20 petabytes. Yeah, it's been our busy book is consistent uh, of two racks. Start with uh, 18 uh, counter shells. Just going to mention as far as the rate rebuild, rebuild recovery, you can probably afterwards. There's some, there are some standards available, and there's been some discussions this week about advanced future coatings where that's all going that might be helpful for you guys. Um, some of them are standardized, and just, you know, rate rebuild, and there's other things like removing the head depot that's been a big discussion point within the standards committees that's going to be coming up soon. Yes, it is a huge field to improve in yeah. that.